Ready to release your money blocks and manifest the life you most want? Today we're going to break down the exact steps for you to create a thriving money mindset. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit the subscribe button and click the little bell so you get notified each time I release a new video about making your money work for a life you love. In the Motivated Mama Society, I have helped hundreds of women release their money blocks so they can feel more confident with money and start to work towards their true goals. Today, I want to share the seven steps you need to take to start to build your thriving, happy relationship with money so you too can reach your goals. Let's get started. And the first of those steps is identifying what your current money stories are. No matter who you are, you have some relationship and preconceived notions about money. And there's reasons for this. When we think about our relationship with money, it's very closely tied to our sense of safety and security as human beings. Think about the things that allow you to thrive as a human being from the most basic to having a safe place to sleep, food to eat, and appropriate clothes. In our culture and our society, that requires having money. Money, which means, especially if you've had places of lack, that you have these intrinsic fears about money and, if, and they're tied to our sense of security. If you had a parent that made you feel bad about how you managed money, or as a woman, we were very often taught that either money wasn't our domain, that we were bad with money, that the things that we most wanted were frivolous. And these have tied these deep seated notions about how money works in the world. So if we want to release our money box, we have to first know what they are. And so for that exercise, what I recommend is thinking about what was your first money memory. I want you to think back. For many people, this comes between the ages of six and 10, but it's the first time there's an interaction with money around you that you remember. And this might seem kind of insignificant in the moment, a conversation in a grocery store, a conversation your parents were having around the dinner table, or it might be bigger and more traumatic. But think about what that first money memory was. And I want you to write it down. Find a comfortable place, write it down. Then take a break, go about your day, go back and hang out with your kids. And when you get another quiet moment, maybe it's a day or two later, sit down and read through that memory, exactly what happened. And the question I want you to ask yourself is, what decision did I make about money in that moment? Because there's a reason that that memory has stuck with you so strongly for so many years. And often it's because it's kind of this wake up call. And because we're kids in these moments and we have limited perspective, it might be something that as an adult, you see a contradiction in, or you just don't agree with it with your personal values. But it's been there in the deep depths of our minds possibly for years, and it's directed our money thoughts. And so I want you to think about what decision did you make about money in that moment? Do you agree with it? And then try to think about where you've made decisions about money, where you've made moves that have aligned with that thought and how you might have made different choices if you knew that thought was there. So I want you to pull those memories to the forefront. Now, once you do the first one, you can move forward and kind of think more about your whole journey. What was the conversation like when you got your first job? How did you feel the first time you saved up to buy something? Have you ever saved up to buy something important to you? Did you have parents that bailed you out with money and how did that feel and what did that make you think about money? Start to develop this list of feelings you have related to money. And if you can't come up with memories at the beginning, that's fine. What I'd start with first when we think about defining that money story is what emotion words come up to you when you think about money? When you hear the word budget or invest or wealth, what comes up for you? Is it fear? Is it nervousness? Is it excitement? Is it, uh, is it power? You think about what those feeling words are for you when you think about money and start to identify, do I have a positive relationship with money or a negative relationship with money? An abundant relationship or a scarcity based relationship. And once you start to feel those emotions, then you can go through your day to day life and start to pick out those stories. This is a good place to create a note in your phone or have a special place where you start writing these thoughts down and develop that money story. That's step one is knowing where you're starting because we can't change your mindset if we don't know what your mindset currently is, right? So that's step one. Step two is to focus in on what you most want to change. We all have a range of baggage when it comes to money and a range of things we probably want to change in our lives, whether that's overspending in a certain category or just really kind of talking down to ourselves when we do spend money or we do want to save money. And so instead of trying to fix it all at once, Remember that money is a journey. This is not something that we handle once and walk away from. It doesn't work like that. Money is intrinsically tied to way too many things that we do. And instead, I want you to pick one thing to start on. What would make you feel 
better? Is it deciding that you do have the power to manage money well, that you are deserving of wealth, that you wanna change your narrative around not being good with money and really feel confident that you're learning? And so pick what that thing is for you, what most eats at your brain, right? What is bringing you down the most? And you'll kind of feel that as you read through the statements of beliefs that you wrote down in step one. Which one makes you feel the most icky, least aligned with who you are as a person? And decide to focus in on that one thing to change. Because once we knock down that domino, we can start to move to the other ones, which is something we do in the Motivated Mama Society all the time, is try to think about goals broken down into a set of dominoes that you're knocking them down one after another to get to some big end result, right? So now that you have your thing you want to change, the third step is to rewrite your limiting belief as a more positive money mantra. And this is where things are important. There's lots of people that talk about money mantras and money affirmations. But if you're saying something that A, you don't really believe, or B, doesn't speak to the narrative you need to change, it's not gonna be as important to you. And so what I want you to do is to take your limiting belief and write it into something more powerful, but do so truthfully. If your limiting belief is I am bad with money, then a new belief, a new mantra that says, I am amazing with money and know everything I need to know might feel really wrong, really dishonest to yourself. And you might try to pr practice that mantra, but feel like it's not, it's not right. It doesn't fit because you don't know everything you need to know and you're still learning. And so instead of going to the absolute opposite end of the spectrum, try to make that pot statement a little more positive. So, I am bad with money, can switch to, I am learning everything I need to know about money, I do hard things all the time, and I can do this too, right? And so it's giving you that evolution, it's giving you that space to have a growth mindset, to lean into your mistakes and use those mistakes as a way to change things in the future, instead of repeating a statement that doesn't really matter to you. But sometimes it is simply a matter of switching it on its head. So for me, for a long time, my limiting belief was that net worth equals self-worth, that my worthiness of love and belonging was tied to how much money I had and how much I was succeeding with wealth. And so for me, my mantra for a long time had to simply switch to net worth doesn't not equal self-worth and that let me start to build a different habit to remind myself of the right things and so ask yourself what mantra will help me start to move from that most limiting belief to something that feels better and truer to me something I want to pass down to my kids what is a money mantra you want to embrace share it in the comments so we have so many positive thoughts of money to refer back to and share with our friends all right so you've identified your money stories you know what you most want to change, and you've created a mantra that moves you closer to the relationship with money you have. Which brings us to step four. You have to start to prove your mantra correct. Our brains are interesting places. As human beings, we for a very long time had to keep ourselves safe, which means our brain looks for negative things and potential dangers much more easily than it looks for successes because in a successful situation, we're already safe. And so certain studies show that it takes nine positive experiences to offset one negative experience, which means we need to force ourselves to remember the positive experiences and make sure we have the ability to see those positive experiences. And so I want you to create small daily habits that align with that mantra. If your new mantra is, I am doing what it takes to be successful with my money. Maybe your five minute a day habit is to check your bank accounts, to update your budget. Maybe it's to listen to a few minutes of a podcast or watch a YouTube video like you're doing right now. If your mantra like me is net worth does not equal self-worth, maybe you're doing something every day to build up your own self-worth, to take care of yourself, love yourself, and pour into your relationships, to show that money is not equal to those friendships. That could be calling or texting a friend. That could be keeping a gratitude journal. Which you want to do is start building up this proof that your new money belief is the correct one because your brain is going to try to keep pulling back to the thing that it knows most because our brain likes to look for evidence of the things that it believes are true because it's more stable that way. We'd be out of control all the time if we were seeing all the ways that other people's opinions were true, which is why it can be hard to change your opinion right on tough things. And so you wanna be creating more and more opportunities to prove your new mantra right. That means creating that small daily habit that every day you are doing something that aligns with your new mantra. 
But to make sure that it sticks, we move to step five, which is keeping track of your wins. I highly recommend creating what I call a money smile file. This is a place where you write down your money wins, big or small. These can be little things like I read this article and I understood more of it than ever before. This could be I transferred $5 into savings or even $1 into savings today. I stuck to my budget this week. Or it could be big things like I paid off a credit card, right? We're going to keeping track of these wins and we're going back to it, whether it's before your weekly money meeting, maybe it's every day while you're, you know, getting ready for work, you kind of look at that journal and you're building this relationship that you are a person who succeeds with money and it's a brilliant, amazing thing, right? And so you're keeping that money smile file as a way to solidify this valuable money relationship that you're building. Now, what is step six? Because we're doing the things, we're getting better, we're making the habit, we know the money relationship we want, and we're moving towards a more abundant relationship. But step six is to not expect perfection. A lot of times we're changing money blocks and money mindsets that have been with us for possibly decades, and that means they're gonna creep back in. We're gonna have moments where something goes wrong or we're just having a bad day, and that old voice is gonna come in and start chiming in our ear and making us feel less than. I want you to not expect perfection. I want you to take those moments, take a deep breath, center yourself, hear the statement and, and acknowledge it, know why it's there and try to change it if you can. If you can't, start over tomorrow, start over in an hour, go back to your money smile file, go back to your mantra and really just keep building. If you have these thoughts crop up, which you will, you have these thoughts crop up and you will, what I want you to remember is that this is a journey. Like I said earlier, money isn't something we deal with once. This changing your mindset isn't something that you can just flip a switch and it's all going to be perfect. You have to move small progress along the way. Don't expect perfection. Don't beat yourself up when the negative thoughts come in or you make a mistake. You're human. It's going to happen. Just get back on the money relationship you've already defined and know for yourself. And step seven is to surround yourself with people who lift up your money relationship and the thriving money mindset you want. That's either bringing friends and loved ones into this journey with you, explaining to them what you wanna change and why you wanna change it, whether it's that it's creating a better generational money narrative for your kids and someday their kids, whether it's because you wanna succeed, you want your life to change, but you know these things have brought you back, right? or you see the life you want to live and you know it's going to require changing your mindset. You want people around you who will use positive language about goals and money, who will support you, who will call you out when they hear those negative voices coming out for you. But if you don't have people in person, this requires finding some people online, joining the Motivated Mama Society, which is linked in the description for a whole community of women who are working through their mindset, who are deciding what their goals are gonna look like and how to align their money with what they most want. Have people around you that believe in values-based wealth building, who believe you are worthy of success, worthy of thriving with money. Those are the people you need around you because otherwise those negative voices, those negative stories are gonna keep creeping back in because it takes a lot of energy to shut down the voices around you. You can do it, but it's a lot easier when you have people on your side. If you're ready to release your money blocks and have a thriving relationship with money, download our Healthy and Wealthy Money Mindset Workbook in the description of this video and get started today. And be sure to like this video and click subscribe so you can continue to learn how to use money to build a foundation to get to the life you most want. You're amazing and I'll see you soon.